All those things I thought, man, those were good. And God says, no, no, actually, as an unbeliever, all of your righteous deeds are as filthy rags, Ward. So now we'll get to our passage in Galatians and we'll finish up. Galatians chapter 4. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son in your hearts, crying, Daddy, Father. That's what the word Abba means, remember? Daddy. So that you are no longer a slave. Jesus said, whoever commits sin is the slave of sin. The moment we had a wicked thought, we were slaves of sin. You are no longer a slave, but a son, a member of the family. My two boys just are asking me about, you know, communion. What does communion mean? And I said, it means we're a part of God's family. We have been united with God's family. He calls us sons and daughters. And if you are a son, then you are an heir of God through Christ. You have inherited Jesus Christ. He is your reward. But then indeed, not knowing God, you served as slaves to those things which by nature being God's. Not by nature. In other words, he's saying, here are these Pharisees and they were trusting in their good deeds and their self-righteousness. And he says, by nature, those aren't God's. And you're slaves to it. You're slaves to self-righteousness, he says. He says, but now knowing God, or rather are known by God, why are you turning again to those weak and beggarly elements of the law, is what he's talking about, to which you again desire to slave anew. He's saying you've been made free in Christ, you've been freed from the bondage of sin and death, and now you're wanting to go back to slavery? He says, you observe days and months and times and years. A lot of people are like that still today. There are people that believe, man, if you don't obey the Sabbath, you're not a Christian. Obey the Sabbath? Christ is our Sabbath. Did you know that every day is your Sabbath? Because Christ is your rest. Christ is your seventh day. The moment you believed, Hebrews chapter 4 says, we entered into his rest. We are no longer bound by Sabbaths. No, now what we are bound by is what? Love. The Bible says the love of Christ constrains us. Why do we go to church? Because we're afraid of going to hell? No. We go to church because we want to meet together with God's people and experience that love and communion and what it means to be forgiven of sin and to rejoice in that. That's why we come together. If you're coming here because you think, well, I'm not going to go to hell. If I go to church, I won't go to hell. Then you've never believed the gospel. You've never known what forgiveness is. The whole reason we show up together is because we've been forgiven. It's because we've been cleansed. And that's what I had to ask myself when I was sitting there. And I went, I've gone through times in my life where I haven't sought out fellowship. And it's like, wait a minute. These are my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. They're my family. The Bible says a man who separates himself meddles with wisdom. Proverbs teaches that. When we separate ourselves and get isolated and get all introverted and, 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 and not wanting to meet together with God's people, he says you're meddling with all wisdom. I know what it's like, man. When I get out of fellowship, I begin my spiral. He says, I fear lest somehow I have labored among you in vain, verse 11. Brothers, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as you. You have not injured me at all, but you know that through the infirmity of the flesh, I preached the gospel to you before. Paul's saying, man, I got shipwrecked. I got beaten. I got rocks thrown at me. I was put in prison. I did this so I could tell you about the gospel is what Paul said. He was so excited about them experiencing liberty in Christ Jesus and freedom that he was willing to go through all this junk for them just so they could hear the gospel. Imagine that. If you knew 
wow, the only way that I can preach the gospel to those people who are at Galatia is to be beaten three times with 39 lashes each time and to have someone throw rocks at me and to be put in prison and to be shipwrecked and spend a day and the night in the midst of the sea. How many of us would do it? That's great love Paul had just to preach the gospel, just to tell people about the forgiveness we have in Jesus Christ. So he says, through the infirmity of the flesh, I preached the gospel to you before, and you did not despise my temptation in the flesh, nor did you spurn it, but you received me as if I were an angel of God. You received me as Christ Jesus. What then was your blessedness? For I bear you record that if you were able, he's reminding them of the time when he had come to them to preach the gospel. They were just so kind and said, come on in, Paul. He says, I bear you record that you would have given me plucked out your own eyes at that time. That's why Paul was saying, I can't believe you guys are starting to believe this false gospel of Christ plus works. So then, did I become your enemy speaking to you the truth? They, the Pharisees, the false teachers, they are zealous for you, but not well. But they only desire to shut you out, that you be zealous to them. Jesus said that about the Pharisees. You try to keep people out of the kingdom of God. You try to shut them out. They were envious. Wow, they have numbers. Those Christians, they have numbers. People are showing up to their church services. But Paul says, but it is good to be zealous always in a good thing. And not only in my being present with you. In other words, just to finish it up here, Paul's basically saying the Pharisees, they were so zealous that they crept into our congregations and spread a lie so that you would eventually go back to what they were believing and renounce Christ. But they started off with this little lie, Christ plus works. Christ plus anything is another gospel. So we don't return to bondage. We don't. God's people never will return to bondage. As 1 John 2 verses 18 and 19 says, it says, and I've quoted this before, and this is a beautiful promise. In case you're worrying, will I ever go back to bondage? Will I ever go back to self-righteousness and trusting in the law and trusting in things plus Christ? You know what the Bible says? In Hebrews chapter 10, it says, we are not of those who draw back under perdition, but we are of those who believe unto the saving of the soul. There's a difference. The ones who draw back, they've never believed unto the saving of the soul. 1 John chapter 2 says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out from us that it might be made clear that they were never of us. People wonder about that all the time. Oh, what about this person? Now they're trusting in self-righteousness. They were never of us. How do you know that? Because Jesus, as we read today in John chapter 17, Jesus said, he said that he would lose none of those whom the Father had given him. He will not lose you. He prayed for you. He prayed for you, just like he prayed for Peter. He prayed for Peter that his faith would never fail. The Bible says he is ever living to make intercession for us. Did you know Christ is praying for you? And because he's praying for you, you will never be lost. Praise God. And if someone does go out and they supposedly stop believing or believe in justification by works, they were never of us. It's a very easy problem to solve when we look at it from God's perspective. If Christ is for us, who can be against us? Don't worry. If you're trusting only in Christ, it is because Christ has given you that faith and you will never return to the bondage of self-righteousness. You will always be believing in the forgiveness of Christ through what he's done on the cross. Praise the Lord.